Dr. Muhammad, and this is the second part. I'm going to talk about the second part of the previous topic that I've started, which is dynamic analysis fundamentals for seismic design. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the response spectrum, part two. So let's jump directly to this part. I'm going to talk now about the concept itself, the concept of the uh, response spectrum. So let's start with it. So first of all, uh, we need to trace back the, uh, the uh, response spectrum. And actually, there are like two main important uh, scientists. Um, their names are highly linked with uh, response spectrum. The first one is um, G.W. Uh, Hausner, and the second one is M.A. Byatt. Actually, um, Byatt is considered to be the first one who introduced response spectrum okay, to the scientific society in uh, 1932. And uh, J.W. Hausner was a very important person. He was like uh, instrumental in the uh, widespread acceptance of the response concept of earthquake response spectrum in general. Okay? So it is initiated, response spectrum is initiated, can be said that it is initiated and introduced, firstly introduced by Byatt, and then uh, widely spread due to the efforts of Hausner. Okay. And it is considered to be a practical means uh, of characterizing ground motions and their effects on structures. The response spectrum provides convenient means to summarize the peak response of all possible linear single degree freedom system. Now let's go to this point. It is like the summarizing the peak response of all possible, possible linear single degree freedom system. That's very important. So we are going to deal with not only one single degree freedom system, so it's not only one that is we are going to deal with, but rather we are going to deal with spectrum. I mean that different buildings, different single degrees of freedom system. To a particular component of ground motion, so if we're going to talk about the Y double dot G, for example, or uh, any particular component of, of interest for us. It also provides a practical approach to applying the knowledge of structural dynamics to the design of structures and development of lateral force requirements in building codes. We're going to find that it is really a central concept in earthquake engineering, in modern earthquake engineering, is the response spectrum. And almost, I think that within the, the last, uh, starting from th 1932, almost we are about to 90 years now, I think that it is the most important um, tool or means in earthquake engineering that, have been, uh, that has been invented or introduced due to the seismic engineering uh, scientific uh, society. Okay, now let's talk about the definition. Let's put first things first and start with the definition of this response spectrum uh, concept. A plot, th this is the definition, it is a plot of peak value of response quantity, so we're talking about response quantity. It, it, it could be anything here that we can talk about the displacement, velocity, or acceleration. So this is the meaning of response quantity. As a function of the natural period Tn, so we're going to say or we're going to talk about Tn as our main input for our system, the natural period Tn of the system. Or a related parameter such as circular frequency. Again, we mentioned that omega n is related to the natural period of the system and it can be linked with the frequency of the system. The three of them are highly linked. Tn equals to 1 over Fn and Tn equals to 2 pi over the omega n. So they are highly linked together. They are representing the same, the same concept, almost the same concept. Okay? So we can put one of these as the input and any response quantity as our output and we are going to graph or we are going to put a graph that is connecting the two together. This graph called response spectrum, response spectrum for that quantity. 
each, so we're going to call it response spectrum of displacement, displacement response spectrum, velocity response spectrum, or acceleration response spectrum. Each, each of this plot or each such plot is for single degree of freedom system. Again, we're talking and emphasizing that we're talking about single degree of freedom system, not multi-degree freedom system, and not the real structure. Now we're talking about single degree freedom systems. Having a fixed damping ratio, talking about fixed damping ratio, do you remember from the previous video, I mentioned about the zeta, which is the damping ratio, and we mentioned that it is in the equation of motion. So the change in zeta is going to make change in the response quantity. Okay, And several such plots for different values of zeta are included to cover the range of damping values encountered in actual structures. So we're going to talk about ranges of zeta from, for example, 0.02 let's say until that 0 0.05 for concrete and maybe we can put like damping devices and so on we can reach to like 0.2 for example maybe also 0.3 something like this this is the practical range that we can we can use uh, response spectrum for whether the peak response is plotted against f of n or t n which is the frequency or the natural period is a matter of personal preference because commonly we see response spectrum as related to TN and this is actually engineers, especially structure engineers, prefer to use natural period rather than natural frequency because the period of vibration is a more familiar concept and one that is intuitively appealing. Okay, So that's the why we commonly we use TN but again it is personal preference. You can do whatever and you can represent it in your based on your preference. Okay, now, now let's go to the concept itself of the response spectrum before we have defined it, but now we want to know what is the concept of it. The, the word spectrum actually, this is of great interest for me, why we use the word spectrum. Uh, in seismic engineering conveys that the idea that the response building have a broad range of periods is summarized in a single graph. It is like, you know, you know the, the, the spectrum that is only like selected colors that like the rainbow, for example, that selected colors only can see, you can, you can see them, okay? So that's, this means that there are different colors or wavelength colors that you cannot see, but this is the spectrum that you can see. Similar here that, that he said that, that this is due to that we are using a broad range of periods okay summarized in a single graph so it is similar like like the rainbow for example or the spectrum okay for a given earthquake I think that it's also it has another meaning but it's not mentioned here uh, I'm not sure actually this is this is mainly coming from like Chopra uh, book and Taranath book but I think that the most important part here is that whenever we have the response spectrum if we're talking about response spectrum it means if we have this is the response spectrum for example okay and remove this part so in the response spectrum that yes we have different t's that's right but each t here the response itself is considered to be the maximum one so we're talking about the maximum of selected things if we have something like this we're talking about the maximum this means that selected value are going to be represented on the response spectrum so maybe the spectrum also work for this. It is not only for the broad range of periods, but also it is regarding or it represents a like uh, selected maxima of the responses. So not all the responses, but selected maxima. That's also maybe one of the reasons. Okay. For a given earthquake motion and percentage of critical damping, a typical response spectrum gives a plot of earthquake-related responses such as accelerations, velocity, and deflection for a complete range or spectrum of building periods. So this is the word spectrum here and this is the main concept behind the word spectrum used here. Okay, now this, is, this graph is very nice and it's going to give us an uh, gives us an insight into the meaning of response spectrum. 
So a response spectrum may be visualized as a graphical representation of the dynamic response of a series of progressively long cantilever pendulums. So each we are dealing with like here as if there is single degree freedom system. Here it is going to be another one for this curve or for this response and here we are going to have another one. But what is the meaning of this? This means that we are representing different single degrees of freedoms. Every system has its own natural period. So this system it has T1 for example. This system it has another the system response for T2. This is it has another T. So this one this single degree freedom system it has T1 here this it has T2 and so on and so forth okay so whenever that we are dealing with this we are dealing with as we said here can deliver pendulums pendulums with increasing natural periods so the natural periods is increasing if we're saying this is T node for example T1 T2 this means that we're going to find this T means that T here is 0 so if we are having a graph this graph actually this is the response spectrum here this one and the graph is a relation between the period t and the acceleration in the vertical axis and then we are going to plot for each response this is the ground acceleration okay which is we call it at the peak ground acceleration here this is the response of the system the acceleration of the system as we obtained it in the previous lecture we understand how we can obtain this uh, acceleration response from the displacement response of the main equation of motion coming from the main equation of motion we're going to be interested in what we're going to look for each in each graph here we're going to look to the maximum maximum value where is the maximum value we found it here for example for this single degree freedom system we found that the maximum is here then we're going to plot it here this is the value and then for another single degree freedom system we're going to plot its response and we are going to seek or search for the maximum this is another maximum here okay at t1 okay this is the progressive time so we are going to plot here on the horizontal axis the period of the system which is t1 we're dealing with t1 here and we're going to put the corresponding maximum acceleration okay which is the maximum response from this graph okay again from where this graph we obtained it from the uh, displacement response which is obtained from the equation of motion that we have solved okay okay now for t2 similar we are going to be interested in the maximum value it, it appears here in another time which is 2 to t2 okay and we found that this for t2 which is the natural period of this single degree of freedom system we have another value for the maximum so this curve the dotted curve here we call it the acceleration the acceleration response spectrum the acceleration response spectrum so as you can see this is the acceleration response spectrum okay so you understand now this is very important graph for us to understand what is the meaning of the uh, response spectrum okay different is different single degrees of freedom systems that we are using here each response is going to have a maximum value this maximum value is plotted on a graph that is having t on the horizontal axis and the acceleration in the vertical axis then every single degree freedom system maximum is going to be plotted as you saw it here as you can see here okay so this is what we call it the graphical description of response spectrum the graphical description of response spectrum okay so we have a variety of response spectra can be defined depending on the response quantity that is plotted. Consider the following peak responses. If we're going to be interested in the, the uh, u, the displacement, or u dot, the 
velocity or u double dot okay which is the acceleration then we are going to have the maximum over the time t for the whole response that is going to be the absolute the absolute value this is why the response spectrum values are always positive that is function in t the time of the response of the system itself because we have this is the response okay and this is t and this is the response if we're going to talk about u for example and tn it is for a single degree of freedom system that is having t okay this is tn the natural period and for a damping ratio the system should be for a certain damping ratio so we can obtain u u dot u double dot okay so we are like having these kind of different things different response spectrum okay so we can have the deformation response spectrum is a plot of u node against tn with fixed damping ratio a similar plot for the velocity or u dot node is the relative velocity response spectrum and for u double dot total we can obtain it as the acceleration response spectrum okay so this means that in the previous here instead of having the acceleration here which is u double dot we can put u dot or we can put u all of them can be used for the vertical axis okay and this is this is another in this figure the absolute value of the peak acceleration occurring during the excitation for each pendulum is represented by a point on the acceleration spectrum this is already we have mentioned this is the first like single degree freedom system the second is here the third the fourth and so on we are going to have as if that these are the single degree freedom systems that is being used each one is represented by t on the horizontal axis which is the period in terms of seconds okay and the vertical axis is qualitative response deflection it is acceleration for example or maybe it is deformation or velocity anything but here this would give us the response spectrum shape this is our response spectrum shape okay uh, if you remember we said that we have zeta right we have this zeta which is the damping ratio Whenever that we have no damping ratio, you are going to find the response spectrum similar to this one. This is the response curve without damping, as you can see it here. But if we are going to have damping ratio, or the system is going to have a damping ratio, like 0.02 or 0.05, we are going to see that the response curves with damping is going to be much lower in terms of the response compared to the one without damping so this is this is the case okay this is the case we are dealing with response here for example this might be the damping is like 0.02 this one damping maybe 0.05 the more that we go down okay this means that maybe damping here is going to be like 10 percent or 0.1 and so on okay so this is the shape of undamped response spectrum and this is the shape of damped response spectrum we go in this direction okay this one we call it smooth curve okay so in the smooth curve this is like mathematically and statistically it is adjusted in a way that is going to be smooth in such a way but actually we have different actual recorded response spectrum it is not smooth it is unsmooth like this as you can see this is the actual recorded response spectrum for real earthquake like el centro or any other type of earthquake so this means that this smooth or undamped smooth one it is going to be different than the real actual recorded response spectrum okay okay so this is the just some curves that is showing to us what is the meaning of the response spectrum okay now let's go to the next there is one concept that is important for us to understand whenever that we're dealing with response spectrum first of all the real building if you look to it it is multi-degree freedom system 
Multi-degree means that it, it has different floors and at each floor the mass is going to be concentrated and lumped. So the actual, this, this building, actually it is something like this. It is, we call it multi-degree of freedom system, right? But response spectrum does not deal with multi-degree freedom system. It is only with single degree freedom system. So we are having only single degree of freedom system as you can see it here. This means that our building must be represented and idealized to be a single degree of freedom system. There are different ways for this, okay, different ways for representing the real and actual building to be a single degree of freedom system, but uh, we're not going to, it's out of uh, the scope of this course, I'm going, going only to hint, or give hints about it and indicate some uh, some of them, but anyway, there are like uh, wealth literature about this issue, how to um, like make the multi-degree of freedom system or the real building to be idealized at a single degree of freedom system. But anyway, for our response spectrum, remember that well. For our response spectrum, we are dealing uh, with single degree of freedom system. Okay, we're not dealing with multi-degree. Okay, so anyway. For the response spectrum, we are going to represent each building as a single degree of freedom system, whether it is uh, with different floors, as you can see, and maybe we can deal with the mass and the length of the single degree of freedom system to represent the length of the real buildings. Okay, so that's the meaning of representation of the real buildings as single degree of freedom system. Okay. Now let's see a, an actual response spectrum. It is important to know about one actual, one actual response spectrum and one of the most important uh, like earthquakes that used in academia in general and practical fields is El Centro. So we're going to talk about El Centro 1940 earthquake which is one of the most considered to be the most famous earthquake in general. You can see something like this. Uh, this is the real response spectrum of the El Centro. This is the real one where that there is no damping at all. So we're dealing with a case where that there is no damping. Uh, then we can, if we use damping of 0.05, it's going to be like this one, this curve. And if it's 0.1, it's going to be similar to this one. Uh, this curve so we are having different damping ratios okay so uh, this is the damping ratio here five percent and ten percent that we have and we plotted on this graph to show to see to you here it is we are talking about the maximum acceleration and foot per second squared and on the horizontal line the horizontal axis we are representing the natural period and seconds Okay, we can use what we call it the family of response spectrum curves can be generated for various level of damping. As you can see, we have different damping here. Uh, where higher values of damping result in lower spectral response, as we said. So in general, whenever that we draw the response spectrum, if we, this is the smooth one where that zeta, for example, equal to zero. But if you are going to put and plot other response spectrum, they are going to be lower here this means that theta here maybe five percent here theta maybe ten percent so the higher damping ratio the lower the response spectrum is okay okay now let's go and have an example and let's see how we are going to deal with this one okay so actually, this example, we want to establish during this example or using this example, we want to establish the concept of how response spectrum is used to evaluate seismic lateral force. Now, using this example, it doesn't say how we are going to uh, draw the response spectrum. It is going to be in the next video. But in this video, we are going to talk about how we can use the response spectrum curve in itself. Okay after having it, uh, how we can use it to evaluate the seismic lateral forces. 
Okay, that's an important. So we are going to use uh, El Centro. Okay, we have two different buildings here. Okay, the first one is an elevated water tank. As you can see, this is an elevated water tank supported in columns. So we have columns here. And its weight is 720 kips. And the second case is a revolving restaurant supported at the top of a tall concrete core. So this is a revolving restaurant and it is supported uh, at the top of a tall concrete uh, core as you can see. And the seismic weight W2 is 2400 uh, kips. Okay? 2400 kips. This is the two cases here. And both of them, they are going to be exposed to an earthquake, ground earthquake at the bottom. And this earthquake is going to be based on El Centro earthquake 1940. So what we want is calculate the lateral loads for both structure resulting from this earthquake. If we assume that they have been exposed to El Centro earthquake, then what are the lateral loads that is going to be generated for both cases? Okay. So first of all, we're going to make some assumptions here. The first is we will neglect the mass of the columns supporting the tank and consider only the mass M1 of the tank in the dynamic analysis. So here we are going to say that only W1, which is related to the mass of the tank, is going to be considered. We're not going to consider the mass of these columns and bracings. Similarly here, in this restaurant, we are going to neglect the mass coming from, from the core. Because it's negligible, it is going to be very small, and it's not going to affect our lateral forces magnitudes at the end. So we are going to use the mass or the seismic weight of the restaurant itself which is 2400 kips. Okay? Let's assume that the first the first uh, um, structure or this is the first single degree as you can see both of them they are considered to be single degree freedom system. We have chosen this in particular to have a single degree freedom system. So we say that here, T for this one, T1 here, let's assume it is one second, it is given in the example. Okay, so T is going to be one second. Okay, sorry, here for T it is going to be, not one second, sorry, it is going to be 0 0.5. 0 0.5, it is given here, this is T.5. And the damping ratio is going to be 0 0.05. So we have T equal to 0 0.5 second and the damping ratio is 0 0.05. This is for the water tank. And this is for the water tank. And for this one, we're going to have T2 equals to T2 equals to one second. And the damping ratio or zeta is going to be 10%. It is going to be 10%. So we have the two uh, the information for us. This is commonly the information needed for the solution. Okay. So this is commonly the information needed for the solution. Remember that in our response spectrum, we need two things. We need, this is the response spectrum. We need T and we need to know what is the damping ratio because we have family of curves. So we need to choose which one is going to be used. Okay. Now let's go to the recorded ground acceleration, which is the earthquake uh, itself, the earthquake, which is El Centro earthquake. This is the El Centro earthquake. The relation here is between the time and time in seconds. Here, here, this is the time. Huh? This is the progressive time, the elapsed time. It's not. It has nothing to do with the natural periods. Okay, this is the progression of time. And here, the vertical one. It is the acceleration, recorded acceleration. Okay over the acceleration of gravity. So it is kind of a ratio between the two. This is a common representation of the earthquake acceleration. So we commonly uh, relate the recorded acceleration of the earthquake with the ground acceleration or acceleration of gravity. That's easier for us to understand 
and uh, gives an insight into the meaning of the acceleration that we have recorded. Anyway, this is the, uh, the graph of the acceleration, okay? And as you can see, we are always interested in what? In the maximum value, but here it does not mean anything for us because this means that the maximum value, the maximum acceleration can occur at 0.2 seconds, okay? It has nothing to do with anything because at the end, we're going to find that it might happen the maximum response of the structure is going to be in different at different time and it will not be necessarily equal to 0.3 okay so this is what we call it the peak ground acceleration uh, if you are going to consider that we have a single degree freedom system that it is infinitely stiff means that it's t equal to zero this means that this graph the maximum graph is going to be plotted if we say that this is the response spectrum here okay this graph the maximum point in the graph here is going to be plotted here this is what we call it the peak ground acceleration the peak ground acceleration let's go a couple of slides before and I'm going to show to you this graph yes here can you see this graph here this one it is for a single degree of freedom system with t equal to zero because here t equal to zero this is the the beginning of the horizontal axis so t here equal to zero this means that this system is infinitely stiff this infinite infinitely stiff means that whenever this is the response spectrum whenever it moves with the earthquake it will move as it is with a rigid body motion translation this means that the any movement here would be recorded on the response spectrum directly so the maximum value is going to be here this is the maximum value of the record the record itself so if we go to El Centro here so here yes this is the maximum value here it's 0.3 so in our response spectrum of this El Centro earthquake, let's see the response spectrum. We're going to find that it is supposedly to be 0.3. It is supposedly to be 0.3, the maximum value or the peak ground acceleration. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to this. So now we can see that this is El Centro. And this is recorded, the recorded for how much? It is for 30 seconds of the earthquake. Maybe the earthquake is larger than this, but we are taking only the, um, the, the time or maybe the 30 second that is going to give us the highest uh, area's uh, intensity or energy that is going to be provided from this earthquake. Okay. Uh, let's have some hints about this as a first step the base of the two structure is analytically subjected to the same acceleration as the El Centro recorded earthquake so whenever that we are going to analyze okay so this is the classical not the classical the way that we are not going to use the response spectrum it is I want only to show that it is a bit difficult for us to get the responses using the numerical analysis or using the Hamel's integral or something like this but anyway first step is we're going to make analytical the structure the base of the two structure is analytically subjected to the same acceleration which is the El Centro uh, uh, recorded acceleration the purpose is to calculate the maximum dynamic response experienced by the two masses during the first 30 seconds of the earthquake the maximum response such as displacement, velocity, and acceleration response of an SDOF system, such as the two examples considered here, may be obtained by considering the earthquake effects as a series of impulsive loads and then integrating the effect of individual impulses over the duration of earthquake. That's the important thing that I want to highlight, that we are going, or in general, the way of the solution of this method uh, of this example is going to be uh, used through what we call it 
Duhamel's integral. Okay, so we're going to use something called the impulse impulse technique. Okay, and then based on the impulsive loads integrating over the time, we're going to get the maximum response using Duhamel's integration method, which is difficult for us. This is something difficult. It needs considerably analytical effort. Okay. Now we can understand that we need something else. We need something easier for the solution. Okay. Here comes the meaning of the response spectrum. Here comes the contribution of the response spectrum. Okay. However, it is not necessary for us to carry out this procedure, which is the Hamel integral or integration method, when using a response spectrum. Because maximum response for postulated earthquakes at a given site is already included in the spectrum. That's the point. Okay, so this is the response here. If we just go to the value of the T of the structure with the corresponding damping, then we can get the acceleration, right? the maximum acceleration. Here this would be the maximum acceleration. If we're going to talk about the acceleration here, this is the maximum acceleration. That's simple. Without doing any kind of integration, without going into a very deep analytical uh, stuff, it is very easy for us. For example, for the tank, the natural period was 0.5 and the damping was 0.05. So we're going to pick this curve and the dashed line indicates that we can obtain this maximum acceleration value. Okay. Similarly for the restaurant, here we use 0.1 which is the damping ratio and we can get the maximum acceleration. Let's have a bigger, yes this is the values here that we are having. Here, so we have beta, so it is beta or zeta, no problem with this, so it is only a uh, symbol to be used. So for the tank, it was 0.05, means that damping ratio is 5%, and for the restaurant, the damping ratio it is 0.1, means that damping is 10% of the critical. So here we introduced only the response spectrum, as we can see here, going with 0.5, and then from this curve we can obtain the value of the maximum acceleration is going to be 25 for the tank water tank and for the uh, for the restaurant it is going to be for point one it's going to be 11.25 from the curve this is what are these values they are the maximum acceleration values in foot per second squared Okay, foot per second squared. Okay. Now, to determine the seismic lateral loads, assume the tank and restaurant structure using weight is going to be 720 and 2400 kips, as we mentioned before, with corresponding values of 0.5 and 1 seconds. Since the response of the structure is strongly influenced by damping, it is necessary to estimate damping factors for the two structures. This is an important issue. Whenever we're talking about response spectrum, it is very important to know what is the damping, okay? Because it is, we are going to change the, the curve itself based on the damping assumed. Okay, so we have 5% and 10% as we mentioned, and the values is going to be 25 as we have mentioned here, 20, sorry, 26.25 and 11.25 respectively for the tank and for the restaurant. Okay, now the next step is very easy for us, that the horizontal force F, the horizontal force F is going to be, uh, for the water tank is going to be 720, which is the weight, this is weight, and we are going to divide it by the gravitational acceleration, this is in foot per second squared, so this is the ground acceleration, okay, in pound inch systems, and multiplied by what? Exactly, by the acceleration. Do you remember? Do you remember this? That F S equals to what? The mass times A of T or the acceleration. Here this is the acceleration. From where this acceleration? From the response spectrum. 
we got it easily. The mass is given for us commonly. Then we can obtain F, which is this value, 587 kips. Okay? And similarly for the restaurant, we can say the weight of the restaurant over the gravitational acceleration, this gives to us mass. And the other term here, it is giving to us the acceleration, which is 11.25 as we obtained from the previous from the previous slide, from the previous slide. Okay, so this is the force here. Now, let's see something. I want you to see something. Look here to this value, which is 26.25, 26.25 over the gravitational, the gravitational acceleration. 26.25 over 32.2, it gives to us 0 0.8, 0 0.8. A, in terms of the uh, gravity is going to be okay certain time here it is going to be 0.8 for the water tank and for the restaurant this value is going to be 11.25 over the same gravitational acceleration is going to be 0.3 almost 0.3 this means what I want you to link between this 0 0.8 0 0.3 and this value Yes, here. The maximum value of the ground acceleration response history. The maximum value was 0.3, almost 0.3, right? This means that the maximum acceleration, ground acceleration of El Centro, it is 0.3. However, for the restaurant, for the tank, the water tank, okay, the maximum acceleration was almost 0.8, as I explained and for the restaurant okay the restaurant it was 0.3 almost the restaurant it is okay the maximum acceleration here it is the same but for the tank it is not okay this means that the acceleration that is going to be developed in the water tank structure is going to be almost almost like three times the maximum acceleration of the ground acceleration of El Centro Okay, three times the maximum acceleration, the maximum ground acceleration of El Centro. This is due to what? Due to what we call it the inertia of the system. In the response spectrum, we have something like this. Here, this is the peak ground acceleration, which is 0.3 as it is recorded. However, whenever that you are increasing T, you're going to find that your acceleration is going to be higher. And this explains why the water tank was 0.8 because our T our T that put us in a part of the response spectrum higher than the peak ground acceleration which is higher than the maximum recorded acceleration of the response spectrum okay so that's this is only one thing that I want to highlight regarding this issue okay this is what I want to highlight here okay okay so this is the case for, for this now the two structures can be yes the two structures can be uh, can be designed by applying the seismic loads at top and determining the associated forces moments and deflections the lateral load evaluated by multiplying the response spectrum acceleration by the effective mass of the system is referred to as the base shear. We mentioned about this before. Okay, we mentioned about this before that here and here, this F of S that we are having, it is considered to be the base shear that is going to be developed and at the base of the system. So the lateral load evaluated by multiplying the response spectrum acceleration by the effective mass of the system, because F of S, as we said, it equals to mass times the acceleration, referred to the base shear. This is V base shear. Okay, This is what we call it the base shear. Okay, And its evaluation forms one of the major tasks in earthquake engineering analysis or earthquake analysis in general. Okay. So I hope that we could understand the meaning of 
response spectrum and having the uh, example uh, that is showing to us uh, what is the response spectrum, uh, how response spectrum is helping us in the design. Uh, I'm going to wrap up with some hints okay, uh, about response spectrum. First of all, buildings have number of modes of vibration corresponds to the number of uh, levels. Uh, whenever that we're talking about uh, real buildings, we're talking about multi-degree of freedom system that we have different floors. Actually, the mode shapes that is going to be um, used in this, uh, in these case, cases, they are going to be different mood shapes, which is not controlled by the first mood shape. So how we are going to manipulate or deal with the single degree, uh, multi-degree freedom system. Uh, in the single degree freedom system, we use the first mode. This is the first mode shape of the multi-degree freedom system. Okay, we use it for single degree of freedom system. But how we can contribute for, how we can put the contribution of the other mode shapes so we are here commonly only this is a hint we are not going to talk about it in detail because later we can talk about the modal superposition and so on so using certain simplifying assumptions it can be shown that each mode of vibration behaves as an independent single degree freedom system so we can say that every mode shape is considered to be a different single degree freedom system Okay, everyone is different single degree freedom system with different T with a characteristic frequency, which is characteristic T. So the single degree of freedom system, we're going to say what are the dominant mode shapes and we are going to say that the multi-degree freedom system equals to the superposition of different single degree freedom system. We're going to say that. How we can do this, we call this modal super superposition method. Modal superposition method consists of evaluating the total response of buildings or of, of a building by stat, uh, statistically combining the response of a finite number of modes of vibration. This is something maybe I, I explained it actually in detail in my dynamic course, but here just I want to highlight it and give a hint. Uh, regarding this modal super superposition method. This is the end of this, uh, of this video. I hope that you understood it well and I hope that you can get um, uh, some sense regarding the response spectrum. Next video I'm going to talk about how we can construct response uh, spectrum in general. And I'm going to talk about, um, uh, sorry, I just want to, yes, so in this part, as I said, um, sorry, this is the part number, number one, but in the part number one already, I, I have mentioned uh, about the, an introduction for, for us, and for part number two, I was giving, I don't know why it's not working here, so, uh, and uh, for the other um, parts, I'm going to talk about the, uh, how to construct the response spectrum and how we can deal with the time history and response spectrum in the same time and obtain the, um, uh, or at least think about how we can construct the response spectrum. Thank you and see you in the next video.